it is a golden opportunity for me to be here at this very moment to see a great family like you guys and i want to tell you that the relationship between i and bishop is like a relationship between david and jonathan and he said when i die take care of my family and if you die i take care of my family may god bless him i really love him and appreciate him in jesus name amen, amen. now um this couple of weeks ahead of us we have a great tax and responsibility bishop has already defined opportunity an opportunity comes like a man with a dirty coat it takes great an intelligent person to identify and to grab it what has happened here today is a history for this church in fact um, i put a team on my social media that we are going to start spiritual warfare the very day i put that particular team spiritually i began to hear some kind of noise from nowhere and i told firstly that first lady we need to pray and i told bishop one of the biggest institution in ghana university called gimpa that trains public administration people for the government i passed through that school and when i completed 2018 or 19 i was in the house and i had a message from one of my governor's lecturer called lecturer agomo is an ever and he said the school has decided to profile you as one of the prominent person in this school so we need your pictures we need your profile and other certificate so i delivered to them and he asked me to come and see how the book is written and before president was signed for no absolute reason i couldn't spend one hour and go i was in kumasi tema accra here and there turkey uk moving all over the very day i put that particular team spiritual warfare in the night i had a dream in my dream i went to see the lecturer and before i got to where he was there was a canal like a lagoon a river and there was a small bridge on that particular canal so i passed through that particular bridge and i got his end and i parked my car the car i use calendar v8 so i parked the car here then a certain lady came from nowhere and he spoke to the lecturer agombo that's please speak to prophet to come and park his car the other side because we're about to open the water to flow and he said no problem let them open it where the car is it is not close to the lagoon so they can open the water and the guy opened the water and church at the rate of the speed that the water was flowing i haven't seen before in my life and the water stream water took my car within a second i saw my car the other end and i said sir why you should have told me this he said don't worry yourself and i said could i get my car back he said no but then before you find your car you see your car says skeleton and i said what should i do now he said go and report to the nearby police station so i was crying in the dream 35 seconds I saw my car coming back. The boot has removed. And then the windscreen also has a crack. But there was a pool of blood. And I said, sir, this is a extreme river. So what kind of animal that my car hit and then all this blood? And I woke up for the first time in history. 
we are on air, live, Ghana, people are watching, our social media also have connected. For the first time in history, I had a dream, and I joined hands with my wife saying, first lady, get up, let's pray. The dream I have last night, if that dream come to pass, you become a widow. What I've seen last night, when it come to pass, you become a widow. So anytime I'm traveling outside, make sure you come out from the room and give me bye-bye. Maybe you will never see my face anymore. And the dream is so terrible. And my heart was palpitating. Then we pray. And I said, yes, I know the meaning of the dream. I like speed. From Kumasi to Accra, it's like a Montreal to Toronto. Four hours, but I used two half hours to get there. So the rate of the speed might be my speed. And then I'll hit something, then I will die. That is even of the dream. So we pray. When I was coming to Canada, I go to the airport. But I use only one phone. I don't like two phones. I don't have time for that. One phone. I pass through the security system. When I go to the other end, a guy called me from UK, called Richard, and he said, my father-in-law died three weeks ago, and exactly three weeks, the mother-in-law also died. So we want you to figure out and tell us what is the cause, what is behind this untimely dead. And I said, oh, okay, Rich, I'm going to Canada. When I get there, by Sunday evening, then I'll get back to you. And I entered the washroom, and I dropped my phone and my passport. Within 35 seconds, this phone disappeared at the airport. Trust me. I did everything. And I said, no, I was on my phone. Then I went to the security point. They said, go and lodge a complaint. They give me forms. I filled everything. And they played the camera. They said, yes, officer, come here. We saw your footage. You are going here. But you know, the washroom, there are no cameras. So we cannot trace from there. But we saw you enter there. We did everything. And I said, then I have to stop going to Canada. Because the address and everything is on the phone. If I go to Canada, what am I going to do? And my message, I prepare everything is on this particular phone. So then, bring my bags or my luggage back. And they said, no, we've already checked you in. And I said, no problem, let the luggage get to where it's supposed to go. I don't care. I'm not going to Canada anymore. Because if I go there, Bishop will be in trouble. No matter what Bishop will do to me, I'll never feel comfortable or happy. And I don't want him to go through that stress. Therefore, I'm not going to Canada anymore. And then, a voice came to me that, you said that you are a prophet, isn't it? And that is where this reverend minister saw me. He will tell you, we shall not allow him to say that. I was crazy, moving up and down, here and there, front and back, looking for my phone. They are playing camera here. And my pressure was going up to 170. And they gave me phone to call my wife. And I was calling myself. For seven times, I couldn't dial my, my wife's number. I swear to God. What I went through at the airport, since I became man of God, no. No. Devil is a liar. Trust me. Then I said, okay, if I'm a prophet, why should I check it and find out? The, the cameras have done its best. But the, 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 the result of the camera said that it ended here. We saw you with your phone. But inside the washroom, there's no camera. So I have to take over from the washroom and get my phone. So I quickly went there and said, that, please, could you stop the KLM people because they've already checked in. And Air France also, we are following. So don't let them go because I'm going to figure out the person who has taken my phone and the person also off the phone. And they said that, no, you can't do that. People will not allow you to come and search from their luggage or their hand, um, um, hand luggage. And I said then, if they also bought in and they fly, that's the end of my phone because the person also off the phone. And they said, brah, brah. They said, could you give me a room that nobody would come and disturb me? They said, yes. They gave me a room. Then I started from my writing. So I put down Barashi Bara Hashamayim Beharet. And then God said, the phone is at the airport. I said, oh my God. 
And I said, God, at the airport, he said, yes. Then I move on. I said, Barua, I pene. Mm -mm. He said that, that a name came. And I said, sir, who is called this name? They say, oh, the honest guy at the Kutuka International Airport. Listen, oh, to the sight of man, he's the honest person. And this guy was helping me front and back to get my phone. Friends, he was the one who took my phone. And they called a the guy. And they said that, this man said that his phone is with you. He said, oh, man of God, how could you do that? You know, I'm helping you here. I say, God is not a man that he should lie. And I've been with God for 32 years continuously. He has never lied before. My phone is with you. Officer, don't play with me. I need my phone. And he said, let's go to where the guy changed himself. They have a changing room. We went there. The guy was so happy, convinced, confidence. Because he knew that where he took the phone, there's no camera. We went there. We checked everything. We couldn't find the phone. And I said, stay there. And I said, the Elohim, the Hashem, who art. And God said, go down the dance step. There is a, a, a dustbin or garbage bin. Your phone is inside. As soon as I said, where is your garbage beans? The guy started palpitating. I was standing here and said that I am a prophet. If nobody even will say, I say, I am a prophet, a man of God. For this incident. And then we went then, then my phone was wrapped with a, uh, something else. And I took out my phone. And I said, what is that? You are so wicked. You can't kill human beings. So the movement I was moving here and the stress I was going through, you were able to pick up my phone and you are denying. I don't have a hands to beat you. I was, I, was, I was weak. But I'm going to Canada. When I come, I'll see your officers. And then they asked him to hold my phone and then they snap him then they give my phone. And I say, oh, now I know. My car got missing. Quick. But after 35 minutes, the car came back. So that is my phone. The dream. Now, this very week, we are going to fly to the highest altitude. We are not going to fight against flesh and blood. We don't have anybody in our mind that he is a cause or responsible to our problems. But we are going to fight against powers and authority. Amen. And today, life will not be the same. Amen. Shout and say, I believe. I believe. Now, when the youth pastor was giving an announcement, he made one statement. He said, Prayer is a conversation between divinity and humanity. And whom do you pray to? Do you know that God, that particular statement alone, touched my heart? This week, I have five different sermons. And five different sermons, I'm going to break them into two. So, I pick one, two days, one, two days. So, we'll finish with it this week. And next week, we'll enter into times of refreshing. So let's begin the prayer and uh, after a title later, um, present your case. Put it on the screen. You can also write it down. Present your case before God. Present your case. Now my little daughter, Deborah, asked me, Papa, I've learned that some ministers of God, they always have what is called morning devotion. With their wives. My lecturer does. But you and mommy, I don't see. Why? And I said, there's no problem in the house. That's why you don't see. He said, is that so? I said, yes. And 
he was a little bit skeptical. I said, Papa, what do you say? I said, yes. We pray. What is the problem? And he said, no. This is wrong. And I said, yes. It's correct. I'm going to open your eyes this morning. When you want to pray, the moment prayer becomes like everyday routine, something you do every day, you will never see the glory of the Lord in your life. So let's go James 5, 13. James 5, 13. Help me to project on the screen. James 5, 13. James 5, 13. James 5, 13. You know how it? James 5, 13. Project it for me. James chapter number 5. Verse 13. Okay, let me then move on because I'm a theologian. He said, If anyone is in trouble, let him or he pray. If anyone is happy, let that person sing songs of praises for what the Lord has done for you. Remember where you are and where you are now. Christians, it's not every time that you need to ask from God. When you do that, you become a greedy Christian. Appreciate what the Lord has done for you. What you are going through right now, somebody went through and it took the person to his or her graveyard. But you are still kicking. Then the third one said that if anyone is sick, because that person is sick, too weak, broke, and that person cannot stand and say, oh, Father, grant me healing. Because of that condition, call the elders of the church. And they should lay their hands on that person and pray for the person. And so if you are here and there's no problem in the house, the five children you are here, there's no problem for your feeding, your education, your mom is not sick. Why should I wake up in the morning and go and disturb God? God, I've come. Give me this and give him that. So Deborah, the reason why we don't pray here every morning is that there's no problem. And he said that, then daddy, I've seen you enter your prayer room sometimes. What is that? I said that I carry people's problems to that particular altar. And the reason why our prayer is not answered is that it is not from God, but we limit God in our mind. Psalm 78, verse 21. Psalm 78, verse 21. If you are there, Psalm 78, verse 41. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. The moment God becomes like your friend, the Bible says that curse be to a man who put his trust in a man. He will be like a tree planted on the wasteful land. But blessed be to the man who trusts in the Lord. He will be like a tree planted beside the water and it roots that the faith go down to the river and it bears fruit all the time and he said when heat comes it has no sea so god is capable to do all things abundantly and exceedingly beyond what you can think of but because you limit god that is why god is not answering your prayer so he said that yet again and again you tempted god and you limit God in your life. Point number two. We all came to this kingdom, beautiful kingdom. Some fathers are already in and we came in. And so we think that prayer is every day. Even when you come to Africa, the youth, they have adopted a certain system of prayer. Karara, 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 karara. Maybe 
seven hours. So when somebody enter into a prayer room and they pray for 15 hours, they are very good, I mean, prayer warriors. If you have a present, no case will take you more than two minutes. You will never go for any interview, any way. Nobody can use 10 minutes to present your case. It should be less than two minutes if you are done. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Are you there? Chapter number, number five. And the verse number two. You can also go to Psalm Isaiah 41. So let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter number five, verse two. Ecclesiastes chapter number five, verse two. Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything, utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you on earth therefore let your words be few cry for jesus do not rush and utter anything just anything god lives in heaven hashamayim and you are on the wretch earth here therefore let your words be few there are a series of examples in the bible i'm going to take you through for example in the book of Isaiah, when Hezekiah got sick and he was at the point of dead, he turned to the wall, two minutes, the guy was done. Oh Lord, look at the way I've worked with you. And I've done what pleases you. Why do you want to kill me? God said, I've seen your tears, I've heard your crying, I've changed it. Christ went to pray. He said, Father, if it is your will, let this cup pass over me. That's it. Hannah got there, said that, Lord, consider my condition, if you give me a son, I will give the son to you for the rest of his life. That's it. Why you will tell you want to pray for seven hours for one thing? Who added more hours to you? That's my problem with you this morning. And that is why Christian community, we are becoming poor. Because we spend all day to pray. And then Muslims, 10 minutes, Allah, Akbar, then they are gone. But you, 31 days. Because you do not know God and you don't know how God answers prayer. Let's go to Isaiah chapter number 41, verse 21. Present your case. Isaiah 41, verse 21. Present your case. Say the Lord, bring forth your strong reason. Say the Lord, King of Israel. So number one, present your case. Number two, bring forth your arguments. Make that argument strong before God. Please, I need two people to come forward. And then uh, I want to do illustration. I love you guys. Now, Today you are God. I'll give you that particular position title. So henceforth you are God. Now, I'm your son. This guy also is your son. And then I know that you have money. I know your capacity. I know your cars. I know your bank account, everything. And I come. I have two problems. One, to pay my school fees. Two, I need to get a visa and travel. That good morning. Uh, I've come to remind you what I told you yesterday. Uh, the deadline for my school fees is um, tomorrow. Then also the visa, I have to submit my application next week. It's okay. And then this man also come. What is he doing? The Bible says, those who speak in tongues, 
they themselves do not understand what they are saying but in the spiritually they are speaking mystery getting a visa is not a mystery and paying a school fees is not a mystery and so the guy was standing here how could i believe that Ha-ba-ba-ba, ha-ba-ba, means school fees means visa application. <laughs> then I will come. Daddy, uh, the fees you give it to me, it wasn't enough. They've added um, 20% to it. You give it to me. So these two people, which one do you answer their prayer first? I'm the one. Take your seat. <laughs> now, therefore, we've all became the same African leaders. They die 64, 62. But the white pastors, Brigham and Co., Bunky and the Yankee Cho, some back, some are 89, 90. But in the Osa, Reverend Amwakon, all of them, you know what? When you stress yourself too much, you become broke. Body, we don't, we don't stress the body too much. There are organ systems in the body. And God said that before you start your prayer, I've already heard you. He knows you. So present your case. The reason why you are here. Father, I am a lady at the age of 35. And the Bible said that it's not good for a man or a woman to live alone. Father, I've been single for 35 years. God grant me a better husband who will take me as a sister, as a brother, as a mother, and as a wife in Jesus' name. That prayer, quick, answer. So, we were afraid of some people who intentionally increased their voice. Call them prayer buddhists. They are not going anywhere. They don't know how to present their case. So they approach this crisis that teach us prayers. Because John the Baptist taught his followers how to pray. He said that when you come to pray, say that what? Our Father. Who asked him? Hi, Lord. Thy King. Thy will be done. Give us. Continue from there. Kamaya. Koroboshia. Now, I want, I want us to um, assess a certain prayer. Genesis chapter number 29, verse 31 to 35. A woman called Leah pray. Let's listen to the prayer. Bishop, why is that your... Um, wow. Wonderful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, there was a woman called Leah. And the younger sister was called Rachel. The name Leah means a crazy boo. Number two, her eyes were squinty. Those that they watch you the other end. Number three, Jacob did not serve for that particular woman. Number four, Jacob did not love her. Even when you give her as a gift, he would throw it away. But Rachel, number one, means glory. Number two, Jacob proposed to Rachel. Number three, because of ritual, Jacob served 14 good years. 
And the father said, over here, that system that you and your mother were able to maneuver and sneak and took your brother's blessing here, it doesn't work in that year. Canadian, the system is straight. If Africa is nyama nyama, Canada is straight. <laughs> then these two people came together and they married one man. Listen to how the woman presented her case. So that these two weeks, when you come in here, if you know you need salary increment, you go straight to the point. If you know you need anointing, God empower me straight to the point. Don't come in here and waste time because we are dealing with time. Now, listen to the woman. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive by ritual, remain childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben. So let's listen to the meaning of Reuben. Reuben, for she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me. So he named the child for a particular purpose. This will give a clear understanding of what the woman was going through. Number one. Then he called Jacob. Said, "Jacob, come here. I know you don't love me. For that one is a fact. I don't want you to pretend, please. But in Israel, I've given you a fair son. So when you die, he will inherit you. Henceforth, please give me a little attention." Jacob said that. Look at her face. Look at her face. Speaking rubbish. Then they did not love him. Then she conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord had that I am not love, he gave me this son too. So she named him Simon again. So Simon means that they don't love me, but for two sons, my husband will love me. That one, Jacob did not love her. Again, she conceived, and he said, I gave birth to a son, and said, Now at last, my husband will come attached to me, because I've borne him three sons. You could clear the deals and understand that the woman had a problem. Am I making sense here? He said that now my husband will attach me because I've given her what? Three sons. Now hear me. Man proposes and God disposes. Sometimes don't rely upon friends too much so that you use the word disappointment in your life whereby nobody is disappointing you. Sometimes your uh, physical capacity, your natural capacity can never take you where you want to be. It is only God who said, I have sent my angel to take you to a place where I have prepared for you. So all these names could not move Jacob. Hmm. That is bad, eh? Say it's bad. Now, so he named his Levite. She conceived again and when he gave birth to a son, she said, this time I'll praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having any children. Crap for Jesus. He said, I've named Reuben for attach, Levite for love, and then uh, 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 Simon, all this didn't work. 
for the fourth one i'm not going to continue that system anymore but this time i'll praise the name of jehovah as you worship god today may god jehovah answer your prayer as you worship god today may god increase you may god expand your wings and your tentacle may god bless you this woman had a case to present before God and you know what Richard did he was on the neck of Jacob and he got up and Jacob said hey woman shut up am I, am, am I, am I God who gives children never again your dad sister is praying to God and God is doing it and you are sending your prayer through me. I'm not God. My job is to have sex with you. That's it. When you learn how to present your case. So, the Bible said that two people went to the church. One was the Pharisees. One was a sinner. And then, and then the, the, the Pharisee man started. Oh Lord, you know me, I pay my tithe. Me, I do fasting 10 days every month. I go to church and then I bless bishop. This man, look at his even outfit. He doesn't, he doesn't even qualify to hold this particular altar. Meanwhile, you are praying your own prayer here. Nobody has asked anything. And he was still talking about this man. And this man said, God, have mercy on me. The Bible said that this woman went home. Prayer answered so sometimes it's not too long but how you present the case i told this man of god he has been with me three days he has never seen my phone ringing i said i deal with more than six million people in the world when you send me a text message and it's more than two minutes i'll reply you in two days time when your message on WhatsApp is five minutes, you are going three weeks later, you get a result. But when the message is within one minute, 35 seconds, 20 minutes, I reply you. Because I cannot sit down one person and put the earphone here for 15 minutes. Whereby maybe there are urgent messages. So it's not too long prayer. But it's how you articulate yourself and how you present your case. Now, hear me. Rachel was trying the same system and God answered her. And then God said, okay, I'm going to give you a son. He gave birth to a guy called Joseph. Joseph means repeat. Add more to it. The second child took her to her graveyard. She was buried on the roadside. Nobody knew where Leah was buried in the Bible. It became an argument for the scholars. Now go to chapter 49, verse 229. Then he gave them this instruction. I am about to be guarded to my people. Bury me with my father in a cave in the field of Ephraim, the Hittai, a cave in the field of Machaphon, near Marin in Canaan, which Abraham bought along with a field as a burial place from Ephraim and Hittai. There, Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. So it is Abraham who gave birth to Isaac and Isaac to what? Jacob. So that particular land, when you go there today, Sarah is here. Abraham is here. They were moving to Isaac. Now, there Isaac and his wife, Rebekah, were buried. When we go there, Isaac is here. Rebecca is here. So it has left who? Leah. It has left Rachel, Leah, and Jacob. Am I making sense here? 
Now, hear me. He said that where that's where they buried them. And he said, Where I buried Leah, the field and the cave in it. So today, when you go there, you see that Abraham is here, Sarah is here, Isaac is here, Rebekah is here, Jacob is here. The woman that he was on love, nobody loved her. The woman who was going through trauma, but she had opportunity to present her case, is still marrying Jacob on the graveyard. So Leah is here, Jacob is here, Rebecca is here, Isaac is here, and then uh, Sarah is here, Abraham is here. Where is that beautiful woman? Where is he at all? Where is he, Rachel? Where is he? If you learn how to present your case, no matter your cultural background, no matter where you are coming from, no matter where your education background, no matter what you think, maybe you are rejected, dejected by people, but if you learn how to present your case and your case and your argument, they are reasonable, Jehovah Elohim will come down and he will answer you. Stand on your feet. Say, present your case. Present your case. Now, hear me and hear me well. People said that, Papa, you are still looking young. I say, yes. Do you know the reason why? When I started this particular ministry, there's a place my son wanted to go, and he has been there for a couple of years, called Atria Mountains, such as Massive Mountains. When I start my fasting, my wife would call my senior bishop, say, please, call your son and talk to him to break the fasting. It's too much. It's almost two months now. And then bishop will call me. Now hear me and hear me well. Any spiritual battle that fought in the Bible, they apply scriptures to fight that battle. The word of the Lord is a sharper than two edges sword. Do not depart from the book of this law. Meditate day and night. If we say you are a son of God, speak to this particular stone. And he said that it is written. Now hear me. He said what? It is written. When we realized that he could not fight against Christ in the area of the scriptures, he left him there and looked for an opportunity time. And this time, he used Apostle Jew, Apostle Judas, financial secretary. Now, hear me. In prayer, 98% of our problem, you cannot use prayer to solve it. You can use the word of the Lord to solve it. So Paul said, I pray for you so that may the God of Jehovah give you the spirit of what? Understanding. So that the eye of your understanding will be enlightened. The moment you begin to know the mundus of paradise of Satan, he will never draw near to your jurisdiction. So I say that resist him. So if you come to my prayer room, you love it more than seven cases I go there if you are sick I start from here you are the Lord that he led thee you are the Lord ah he led you sent your word and I heal all disease you are the Lord our healer. Father, I've come before the throne of God this morning on behalf of your daughter, Mrs. Juliana. This woman has served the church for 35 years. For all her entire life, she served you, oh God. God, the Bible says that you are the Lord that heals. If we don't heal this particular woman, the church will be disappointed. Answer my prayer 
as a heavenly representative. Any disease in the body, I flushed out in the name of Jesus. Julie, you are healed. Then I forward the prayer to you. Said, Julie, you have the prayer. Say yes. Two minutes, say, Papa, I am healed. Then I go back again for another problem. Say, present your case. Then the case is a missing daughter. The Bible said that the eye of the Lord is going around Jehovah. Looking for those that your heart are fully committed to you. Now your daughter Elizabeth, the granddaughter, has got missing in Canada. For the past three days, they've searched and searched and searched and searched. God, I pray that you use your eagle eye to spot that particular granddaughter. Before the day comes to an end, God, honor me and answer my prayer. Let them call yourself and say that we have found that particular granddaughter and I will honor you in Jesus' name. I said, Mama, by tomorrow by this time you, you, you find your granddaughter. He said, Papa, 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 we, we found my daughter. I said, I told you. That I'm going to come. Financial problem. Father God, in the name of Jesus, the Bible said that silver and gold belong to you. And so Paul said, and my God shall supply me all my need. Father, I pray for financial empowerment and financial breakthrough over the life of your servant, Pastor Terry. Father, increase him. Father, increase him. In the name of Jesus. Then I said, Pastor Terry, this year something will happen in your life. Then you call me, man of God. I say, yes. Man of God, I say, yes. Man of God, I say, Terry, what is that? Man of God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Our God reigns. But not that I go to the prayer room and go and, 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 and then stand there. And God said, Ah, my servant, at this age. You don't know how to present your case before your father. Present your case. Then someone said, Papa, I've been married for almost 10 years. No issue, no child. And Papa, it's a hell for me. I say, have you checked everything? He said, yes. Good ex, yes. Your husband's sperms, Papa, we've done all the tests. Can I have a copy? He said, yes. Father God, the Bible said that the fruit of the womb is for the Lord. And children are a gift from you, God. Your daughter is looking for a gift. Father, as you bless Hannah, as you bless Sarah, God, bless your daughter so that you come and honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Father, a year by this time, let it be a testimony. Then I said, Julie, I pronounce you a mother. A year by this time, you will come and get your, 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 your child here. The same year, he will come here. So the reason why our prayers are not answered is that we have adapted a certain system which we do not understand even what we are saying. And we should, Paul said that therefore, I will pray in tongues and I will use my own, my, my what? My understanding also to pray. Because if I pray in tongues, you will never understand. Therefore, whatever you are looking for is not a mystery. Marriage is not a mystery. Having a car is not a mystery. But when you pray in tongues, you speak in mystery. I only speak in tongues whereby I'm very weak in prayer. Things are not clear for me. And I don't understand. I, I, I'm experiencing ambiguity here and there. Then I can start Kuri Baba Ruma Santeya. The Bear Ruba Si and the Ika. Kano Rima Mama Zuba Aika Ika. La Bear Ruma Aisa Kaku Rima Aikia. Dan the Riba Aika. Because I don't know what to say, but spiritual things are disturbing me. I am going down. First lady is, is not happy in the house. I've asked her several times. He said, there's no problem. Me, myself, my pressure, my diabetes, they are going up there. I don't, I don't know what exactly wrong with me. Then I'll start from the tongues to speak the mystery. Karuba Masiyane, Kanderima Anda Masakia, Luka Aika, Darima Maiba Ukaku Kaa, Lande Maaka U, 
you are the Lord who knows all things. Hidden things are for the Lord. And the thing that has been revealed, it has been revealed for us and our children. I hand over to you. Let your will be done. Which means I don't know what the problem is. But if I know what the problem is, I will mention it all. Hey! So our fathers, they made a lot of mistakes in prayers. So people, they spend a long time and they pray, but they don't get the word, the answers. And somebody will begin today, the next morning, something begin to happen. I want you to begin to blow your tongue. Because there's no prayer. To begin to pray, pray, pray. In the name of Jesus. You are the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim. Hey, Ramama, let the fire flow. Father, we pray. Karuba Marima Andi. In the name of Jesus. As we pray today, Lima Marubo Aika. Oh, you are the Lord God Jehovah. You are the one that we know, Elohim. You are Adonai. Father, as we pray this very moment, answer our prayer in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Hey, Maromo Shikaya. Now, prayer number one. From today till on the 12th. We are expecting God's power to prevail in this house. The Bible said that if the Lord Jehovah does not build the city, the builder is in vain. We can fix a date from 29th to on the 12th. And God said, my presence will not be there. We we'll come here and shout and shout and shout. Nothing will happen. Therefore, we are asking God that God let your presence uh, prevail. Come more of us here. Father, we pray for your presence uh, in the name of the Shua Hamashiach. Father, as I pray, Father, we release the power. We release the ocean. Pray, 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 pray. We release the ocean. Father, we, we, we love you and we know that God, ah, uh, uh, you are here before us. Father, God bless your people. Oh, let them have an encounter with you. 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 Ah, Makoruma Saika. Prayer number two. Again and again. Again and again. You have limited the Holy One in your mind. You consider God as your friend. You consider God as me. That's why you have the word disappointment. But the day you see that God he is omnipotent he is omnipresent he is omniscient he's immutable he's unchangeable you will see his action tell god that god i want to see you i want to know you than never before father appear to me pray to god tell god that god i want to have an encounter with you oh in the name of jesus lord we have come before you oh jehovah elohim adonai as i pray oh my god my god my god lord bless your people as we pray this very moment father i want to experience your glory in the name of jesus you are the lord god Order, we come before you and he said present your case make your argument strong tell me the reason why God should leave his throne heaven and come to RC center even the prime minister of Canada will never just walk in here without any special invitation how much more God himself? Why are you calling God? What's the problem? If you are here, you know that God has blessed you, given you a job, and then you are sick, and God healed you here and there. Sometimes thank God. But if you think you have a problem that is beyond your strength, please, I want you to present your case. Women that they are looking for children, put your hands on your stomach. If you are here and you have a pressure, Put your hands here on, on your heart and say that God, the Bible said that God used the early apostles to do great things. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, any disease.
don't want to cripple me, don't want to destroy me. Father, I pray, answer my prayer and grant me divine healing. Open your mouth and pray. Come, more robust. Father, we pray. We have come to present our case before the Lord. Lord, we have come to present our case before you, oh God. You are Jehovah, you are Elohim, you are Adonai. Father, as we stand here today, as we pray, oh God, honor your people. God, honor your people. Father, honor your people. As we pray, oh Jehovah, in Maruma Sakaya, let them experience your glory in the name of the Shua Hamashiach. Father God, answer their prayers in the name of Jesus. As we pray, oh God, answer them, Lord, answer them. Oh Lord, answer them. No matter what they are going through, no matter what their problems are, Father, answer them in the name of the Shua Hamashiach, we pray. You are the Lord God that we know.